Hello, my name is Richard Corbett and this is my reflection of my current photographic practice. I've been taking photographs for approximately 30 years and professionally for the last six years. Up until I became a professional photographer, I was, and still am, a practicing electrical engineer. And I still design projects like these for clients. You will see the reason for me stating my engineering background later in this presentation. A little bit about my background. During the 1980s and 1990s, both of my parents worked in Ulster Television. Their work colleagues and friends were staff who worked both in front of the camera and behind it. This meant that I grew up in an environment where I had a unique insight to the media. My father, the man shown here in the bottom right hand corner of the picture, asked the in-house photographer what camera would be good for me and he bought me a Nikon F301 and I later added a Nikon FM2 to my collection. I used both of them for many years and they served me well and without fault. And as you can see, I still have them and they are still fully functional. The result of this childhood was I had an inquisitive mind and used photography as a way of channeling that inquisitiveness into observing the world around me. And yes, that is me with the real Darth Vader, David Price, in full costume. And I can say I survived the death grip of Darth Vader. Fast forward 30 or so years and I still have this inquisitive mind and photography is still my chosen tool I use to encapsulate what I see. I can't fully express the joy and satisfaction it gives me when I capture an image and I use the word capture very specifically. I see time, motion, the world, life being a fleeting entity like the early morning mist that disappears when the sun rises, never to return again in that exact same way. And the nature of photography, being that of drawing with light, lets me capture the most transitory elements of the world for all time. What proof is there that something happened once it has happened? Yes, it is in our memories, but they fade, change with time, and the accuracy of the event can be lost. Photography, both still and moving images, really are the only way of preserving a section of time. And this is what I love about photography. So I have been using it to capture times and events that are exceptionally pertinent and special to myself and other people. With this mindset, the two genres I enjoy are totally opposite from each other, but they let me investigate the element of the decisive moment, as described by Henry Cartier-Bresson, and that is, landscape and street photography. Here are some examples of my street photography. These are photographs taken during a four night period I spent with the police service of Northern Ireland. I travelled with the crews from 10pm until 4am photographing the incidents they were called to. I witnessed child runaways, bail elopers, hate crimes, arrests, drunkenness and revelry. I also had the opportunity to be in Sri Lanka on four different occasions over the period of a year. I was able to spend each evening walking the streets of Colombo, photographing life in all its rawness. I walked approximately five miles each day and saw extreme luxury and extreme poverty and the chaotic way of life that is their norm. Having grown up and living all my life in Northern Ireland, I have experienced a very polarised religious political mindset that is still evident in this little country. It really shows itself during what is called the 12th fortnight, and that is from the 11th of July through the next two weeks. The 11th night, as it is called in Northern Ireland, is also called Bonefire Night, and the Protestant communities light staggeringly large bonfires in their communities. There is lots of drinking, singing, chanting and revelry, which is fine if you're part of that community, but if you're not a part of that culture background, it can be very intimidating. The other area of photography I love being in, but for a totally different reason, is landscape photography. The peace and solitude I experience lets me have time to recharge while also having the opportunity of losing myself in the moment of taking landscape photographs. I also love hiking in the mountains and camping overnight with only my dog as company. As the element of roughing it 
gives me a chance to stretch myself physically, which I find clears and re-energizes my mind for the challenges of modern life. I think my photographs express this serenity and peacefulness as people have said they love looking at my photographs as it relaxes them. To be honest, when I started taking photographs of people and the world around me, I was totally oblivious to the terms street photography and landscape photography. I didn't realise these genres were what I was interested in. I just took what interested me. Another area of photography that I am passionate about is teaching photography and I am keen to help fledgling photographers become more knowledgeable in the use of their camera and how to take better photographs. I have taken workshops and classes multiple times over the years and because they have the same mindset as I have, I have become a member and now the regional organiser of the Royal Photographic Society for Northern Ireland. I organise events, seminars, workshops for both RPS and non-RPS members and invite speakers to the events. Like everyone, I have to earn money to pay the bills and this has led me to taking on clients who need images for such things as websites and social media music albums, product shoots for their online catalogues, all types of event photography, baby photographs, cake smashes, marriage proposals, engagement photo shoots and lots and lots of wedding photographs. These are some examples of weddings I have taken recently and as you can see I like to have lots of fun with my bride and groom and their extended family and my intention is to capture the fun, the love, the laughter, the intimacy and the closeness that happens in a wedding. My project proposal I am heavily involved in a contemporary non-denominational church whose outreach methods are consistent with the context of a 21st century world. This is my church and this is a typical Sunday service with over a thousand people attending the two morning services. It is very lively and loud but is not just filled with teenagers and 20-somethings. There is a large number of senior citizens, the oldest of which is 90 years of age. But it is not without its naysayers, critics and sceptics, mainly from the more traditional churches who think that a church like this is pandering to the modern secular desires of the world. This disparity among faith groups is what I want to explore in more detail in my MA. Being an electrical design engineer, I have to work to guidelines and British standards for lighting levels within buildings. The Chartered Institute of Building Services Engineers has produced a lighting guide specifically for places of worship. It explains in some detail what the different denominations and faith groups want in their place of worship. And with this in mind, I want to investigate how different faiths use light, lighting and the audio-visual medium and photography within their service. I want to contrast and compare the methods used by each faith group to see how different church organisations have both in the past and currently used their building for times of worship. I want to better comprehend what people understand a religious venue should look and feel like. I am hoping this investigation will enable others to see inside places that their own religious bias has prohibited them from entering. And hopefully it will facilitate in even a little way to remove the fear and mistrust one religious community has for another. So my methodology will be to photograph the locations with the same photographic settings, ISO shutter speed and aperture. I will process the photographs using the same presets and therefore will have the ability to compare the relative lighting effects in the buildings. I will also take the photographs using the full facility of my camera and post-processing tools such as Lightroom and Photoshop to represent the way the worshippers see their venue once their eyes have adjusted to the specific light levels. And I will also take 360 degree images to enable the reader of my assignment the fullest immersive experience of the venue.